Hello. 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 Next we have, well, I want to thank Dunidojina uh, first. Uh, next we have Amalia Rubin, uh, a supporter of our cause, a Tibetan cause. She was arrested and deported while she was residing in the China-Tibet border and uh, she's here to talk about it. Malia. Um, I am not supposed to be here today. I'm not supposed to be giving a speech. I'm not supposed to be in New York. I'm not supposed to be in the United States. At this time, I'm supposed to be in an apartment in Chengdu on the campus of the Southwest University for Nationalities where I was legally hired as a teacher. I had Chinese students. I had Tibetan students, a legal visa, and a legal residence permit. My crime was the fact that I was able to speak Tibetan. The fact that I can talk to people like you your family members, your cousins, and your friends residing in Tibet. On March 5th in the morning after class, I was leaving the building to go to lunch when I was surrounded by public security bureau officers, including plain clothes police, who grabbed me, confiscated my phone, and started demanding my passport. They physically forced me into the elevator, brought me up to my room, sat me down, and started searching my bags. I demanded to speak to the consulate, and they told me, this is China, Chinese law and told me to shut up. I sat there as I, they searched every single thing I own. My books, my clothing, my laptop, my camera, even my underwear. Every single thing I own, and then they told me I had 10 minutes to pack my bags and leave screaming at me the entire time. They took my bags from me and loaded me into an unmarked non-police car and put my bags in behind me. And they brought me to the PSB station at the airport. They then spent three hours interrogating me and searching through my computer, up, pulling up deleted documents, including photographs of a demonstration in New York City that I had previously deleted. At that point, they announced that I had broken the laws of the People's Republic of China, even though I had done nothing political in China or Tibet. They told me I was going to be deported and then told me that they were going to search my bags. Since they had already searched my bags, I found this surprising. During the second search, when I had not been able to touch my bags for the past three hours, they pulled out a four foot by three foot Tibetan flag, which they had placed there because they knew that I had done nothing wrong and they knew that my only crime was my ability to be able to speak with your cousins and your family in Tibet. They then loaded me onto an airplane, forced me to sign false confessions, attempted to photograph me with this flag that did not belong to me, gave me a police minder who held my passport and phone the entire time until we reached Hong Kong. The only way I was able to contact the United States government and get out of there safely was using a phone that I had hidden on the chance that the police would try something like this. On the days before living in Chengdu, a region called Wuholzi, where most of the Tibetans reside, I had walked down the streets and every day seen a minimum of two trucks full of riot police armed with guns. AK-47 standard remove 30 round clip, yes, I know what they were. I saw riot police waiting at every street corner, stopping people and talking to them. I saw a woman get loaded into an unmarked car and sent back to Lhasa, and we don't know if she's okay. Since my deportation, at least one of my students has been detained, a young man from Amdok. I've heard that he's been released, but I don't know if he's been detained again, or if my other students have been detained. I don't know if my friends are fine. I can't call them. I know. 
that in this audience of thousands of Tibetans and supporters, there is at least one or two Chinese spies. And I know that you are here listening and photographing and taking notes on everything we say and do. And I want you to know right now that we are going to check up on our people in Tibet. You cannot scare us. You cannot stop us from making sure that they are okay. And if you hurt them, if you arrest them, we will know. And we will report it. And you cannot, no matter how many times you arrest me, or my friends, or anyone else, or how many photos you take, you do not scare us. And that is why we are here. <laughs> They charged me with organizing a Tibetan independence demonstration in Chengdu. And this is proof that they are stupid fools. Because no one needs me. No one needs a foreigner to organize a demonstration in Tibet. Because as long as the Chinese occupy Tibet, as the long as the Chinese arbitrarily arrest, torture, and kill Tibetans, as long as their bloody red flag flies over the Potala, Tibetans will rise up on their own. They don't need me. They don't even need you. They have the passion. They have the burning desire for freedom that every human being lives with every day. They watch their friends, their cousins, their sisters loaded into unmarked cars. They watch themselves getting thrown into jail. Their phone calls are listened to. I had my phone calls quoted to me. They don't need us because they have that passion. And as long as there is even one Chinese flag flying on Tibetan soil, Tibetans will rise up and tear it down and we will be there supporting them the whole way. Thank you, Amalia Rubin. Thank you, Amalia Rubin. I, actually, I want to take this opportunity on behalf of all the Tibetans here in exile and inside Tibet. We want to thank all our supporters and friends who have supported us till today, and we would like to request them to continue supporting our cause because supporting us supporting our Tibetan cause is supporting truth, supporting justice. Thank you very much.